Hello, my name is Magnus, and today I thought I'd show you how the Elm Light plugin for Lighttable might help you manage uh, your project dependencies for your Elm project. So, here's the package JSON. Let's uh, fire off the uh, package explorer as part of the plugin. It basically just lists all the dependencies and it also lists uh, the transitive dependencies that you won't find in the Elm package JSON. So you can see that it's a transitive dependency because the range column is empty, but you see there's an exact version, which is the version that Elm package has uh, resolved to. And let's fire off the dependency graph, which was just added to the plugin. And that's quite handy to get a more detailed overview over how the various packages interdepend. So you see here that the dashed arrows indicates a, a transitive dependency. So here you see that uh, Star App and Elm Sweeper both have a dependency to Elm HTML. So maybe we don't actually need the direct dependency from our root project. So let's just go ahead and remove that. And you see that the diagram uh, updates automatically. And we still have H Elm HTML as part of our project dependencies. And you can also add dependencies. So let's add one. JSON, I think there's one called, yeah. So that takes a little bit more time because it actually installs the package and then updates the diagram. Um, what happens if you install a package that doesn't make too much sense? The intrange plugin hasn't been updated for Elm version 0.16, which is the version that my project uses. So this ought to fail, and it does. You can see that the dependency is shown with a red background, and you get a message back from Elm package, the command line, which tells us that this dependency doesn't have a acceptable uh, Elm version range specified in its package JSON. So that way you get a little bit uh, of an overview of how uh, your dependencies uh, are interconnected and you also get a little bit of overview uh, when things go wrong. I'm sure there's tons more that can be done here but then again this is probably not the most critical part of your Elm development workflow but it's kind of neat and it was a lot of fun actually implementing it, so I thought I'd show you. Anyways, I hope you find it useful, and um, thanks.